turf and park managers are coming under increasing pressures, either from a concern around public safety, land use concerns, water quality, and even greenhouse gases. There has been a lack of suitable habitat for wildlife. And if you consider that parks cover around 1.9% of the entire of continental USA, we're talking around 40 million acres that are in lawns, parks, grounds, golf courses, you name it. So we're increasingly concerned about how do we manage these landscapes in a way that has far less negative consequences, but actually at the same time takes a care of profitability. So if you look at what's been happening in terms of a lot of our input use, even if we consider herbicide use, there's now over the 500 species that are now herbicide resistant. In terms of pesticides, we also have around 500 species that are resistant to pesticides, and we're seeing antimicrobial resistance just skyrocket. All of these things are on an exponential growth pattern. And what's happening is we're finding more and more chemicals to try and address the issue that the previous chemical has been causing. So the solution is not for us to get a bigger and bigger gun. You know, we have 170,000 common words in the English language, whereas we have over 20 million names for the different chemicals that we're currently being exposed to or that are in the environment. Every day or even every three seconds, another chemical is being invented that we don't know what the consequences of these chemicals might be on the environment or in ourselves. In the past, we've been managing turf systems and grassland systems like they're a piece of machinery, but actually they're alive. But through treating something like a machine, we're getting into practices like calendar spraying. We're using chemical controls to be a reaction against what's been happening in the past. We're bypassing a plant's natural nutritional system by applying different types of fertilizers and synthetic inputs. Also, turf and grassland environments are monocultures that can have an impact on the underground microbiology and undermine some of the benefits that would happen if we had more diversity in these systems. So when I talk to producers, it's really interesting when I ask them this question of what do you want? Like really, what do you want in your heart of hearts? We find that people are really concerned about well-being. They want to see staff and people that are using grounds um, being safe, being happy. We also want to see within organizations that we feel like we have a purpose, that there's inspiration, we have leadership, we're creating cultures that actually make people want to continue to work in the positions that they're working in um, and feel like, I don't know, joy when you go to work. Uh, we also want to see more or improved outcomes for the planet. So in terms of stewardship, land, water, air, biodiversity, all of these things are very real and very urgent outcomes in terms of improving what's currently happening. And at the end of the day, we need these things to be profitable. So how do we reduce the need for inputs and how do we ensure that we have financial returns in whatever it is that we're managing? And what's fascinating for me out of all of this is all of it comes back to soil health. It doesn't matter if you're interested in water quality or greenhouse gases, climate mitigation, food quality, human health. The very reason for our existence on this planet comes back to soil health and the quality of soil that we're managing.